Hi guys, it's Jeff here, the Photographer's Mentor. And in this short video, I'm going to tell you how to get more engagement on your content using LinkedIn hashtags. And this is something I see a lot of photographers making mistakes with because they're either using too many hashtags, they're using the wrong type of hashtags, or they're using hashtags that have very poor following and is not, them, not going to get them any organic reach. So there's five steps to creating and using the best hashtags on LinkedIn. Firstly, you need to understand who your ideal client is and the type of hashtags that they're following. Next, you need to research your hashtag content, your hashtags that you're gonna be using. Thirdly, you need to understand the different types of hashtags and select hashtags from each one of those areas. Fourthly, you need to use your hashtags sparingly and put them in the post correctly. And fifthly, you need to create your own personal hashtag on LinkedIn because this can really, really help um, get more eyes on your content and build your following. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen and have a little chat about different types of hashtags. So I'm just going to head over to the share button here, share my screen, and I'll take you over to my LinkedIn profile. So here is my LinkedIn profile. Now, the first thing you need to do is to understand uh, the type of clients that you have. So if you are a personal branding photographer, your clients are going to be business owners, entrepreneurs, um, mentors, thought leaders, people who are effectively maybe their own personal brand, coaches, uh, gym instructors, yoga teachers, people like that. So you need to think about the industry and the jobs they do. They're not going to be following hashtags like photography. They're going to be potentially following hashtags like entrepreneurship or marketing or business marketing, stuff like that. So how do you find out what type of hashtags to use? First of all, go up to the LinkedIn search bar here and type in the hashtag sign. Now, LinkedIn will give you some prompts, basically whatever your previous sort of like searches are or your most popular searches are. So you could look at, let's have a look, uh, we'll go business. So you're typing in business, it comes up with business branding, business advertising, business leadership, business advice. So business branding might be good for a photographer who is aiming at personal branding because are people going to be following this who your ideal client? You click onto the hashtag there, and that only has 342 followers. So that's what you call a really low hashtag. And this is globally as well. So if you're a local business, you're not going to get much traction under that hashtag. You want to be getting ones with followers over the 10,000, 50,000 sort of mark, with the exception of geographical hashtags. So this comes on to the next um, step, which is understanding the different types of client uh, of types of hashtag. So you have what you call broad hashtags. So these are usually things like let's have a look at marketing. So marketing itself is a very broad and that hashtag because that's usually just one word and it covers a huge area. Now a more niche hashtag would be marketing coach or marketing campaign or social media marketing or pay-per-click marketing or something like that. Usually the broader niche, the, the, the broader area hashtag is just one word. And then the niche, the narrowed down is taking a sector of that. So if we go to the suggestion underneath, we click on marketing and that will bring us up to see the follow account. And I know this has a huge, huge, huge following. So that has 20 million followers. You're gonna struggle to get traction on this as well because the news feed is so busy. However, and you want to make a note of this, he's one great top tip. LinkedIn is a lot quieter on a weekend, but people still log in to see what's going on. However, content creation is really down on a weekend. So if you want to utilize these big, broad hashtags, likes of marketing, likes of uh, personal branding, because I know that has a big following as well then what you can do is use these in your posts on a weekend. So if you create a post on a Saturday, use this. You're probably going to get more chance of getting into the news feed, getting some traction early on, and that should hopefully carry you through the following week too. So that is your first hashtag, marketing. That is your broad hashtag. Like we said, then there is the niche hashtag, the smaller hashtag, which is something usually in front or after that word. So social media, 
marketing, content marketing. So like photography might be a, a hashtag and then you would have portrait photography. So that's niche down to a particular type of photography. Then you have what we call geographical hashtags. And this is one of the hashtags that you want to um, actually go to for smaller amounts. So if you went for, say, like, let's have a look, London business. I've got no idea how many followers this is going to bring up. 291, uh, 219, sorry. So it's still quite short, quite small. Let's have a look at London itself. Have a look at London. So London, 47,000, that's quite big. Now, what that means is the majority of people posting under that hashtag are probably going to be from London. So if you're a London photographer, that might be a good hashtag to use. Or you could, if you're in a business people, you could type in, you know, uh, London, uh, London networking or business London or something like that. Or Lon London business, London entrepreneurship. If you're a food photographer, you could put, uh, London events, London hospitality, do a bit of research and try and get uh, a decent local following, maybe less than 50,000, something like 10,000, 5,000. Even if it's quite small, like two or 3,000, it's not too bad because you know that it's going to be to the people in your area. So that is what you call a geographical hashtag. Then you have emotional hashtags and emotional hashtags are things like, um, you know, like Happiness, uh, feel good, more like the Instagram-y type hashtags, you know, so happiness does have a huge following. A lot of positivity hashtags work really well on LinkedIn as well. So like motivation, positivity, success, that sort of stuff. I actually use success as one of my hashtags. And then the final thing to use on LinkedIn is to create your own personal hashtag. So this could be what you do. This could be uh, the name of your business So. um you know, Jim's Martin photography or um, Sue's fine food photography. As long as nobody else is using that hashtag, if it's got no followers, then you can start utilizing it. So I created mine, which is creating successful photographers. Nobody else uses that. I use that in all my content now. You see, I have 445 followers for that hashtag, which is quite a few. But what that means is every time I post my content, appears under that hashtag. So if somebody decides to, or if people tag me in or tag my hashtag in, it appears in there as well. So if somebody decides they want to follow my hashtag, then they're more than likely going to um, see my content because they've, they've said to LinkedIn effectively, can I see Jeff's content before anybody else's because I'm following his hashtag. The other good thing about it is it collect all my content together. So like yesterday I did a live on LinkedIn um, and then a couple of people says, oh, Jeff, I never got a chance to see you live. I'll say, Fair. that's easy enough. Just type in creating successful photographers, um, head over to the hashtag and you'll see all my posts. Just scroll down and you'll see the live there. So it's a really good idea to create your own hashtag and start utilizing your own hashtag on LinkedIn. And then you can show that in your headline and your banner. You can ask people to follow your hashtag on your LinkedIn banner. And in your professional headline, uh, just be your name, below your name, you can say, follow my hashtag. If, if you look over at my profile, you'll see that. Follow my hashtag, Dave Smith Photography, for regular top tips and advice on building your brand online, depending on whatever your photography niche is. So hopefully you found that useful, guys. So we've covered the five different areas that you need. You need to understand your client type. So what are your clients going to be following in their newsfeed? What's of interest to them? It's not probably going to be a photography hashtag unless you offer photography training or photography mentoring like myself. Then you need to research your hashtags before you use them. So don't be using hashtags that only have, um, you know, um, 500 or 1,000 followers. Understand the different types of hashtags, so geographical hashtags, ins inspirational or emotional hashtags, um, broad hashtags, niche hashtags, and obviously your own personal hashtags. Then you need to use these hashtags sparingly. I recommend, I use about five hashtags on every post, so I use about four hashtags 
for the content that I've created. And that is separated away from my actual content that I've written on the post. So I write the post, then I put at the bottom of my post, click on and follow my LinkedIn hashtag. And I put my LinkedIn hashtag there for regular um, photography business, top tips and advice. So tell people why they should follow your hashtag and always put that click on and follow. That's really important because before I used to put click on and follow, I used to just put follow my LinkedIn hashtag. I didn't think people knew how to do it. And ever since I started using click on and follow, I've seen the follower numbers on that hashtag really grow. So when you've finished that, when you put your click on and follow my hashtag, then do about two or three line space returns down and put the five to six hashtags that you're using relevant to the post at the bottom, away from your content. You don't want to be using hashtags inside your content uh, and you don't want to be using more than, you know, sort of like seven or eight hashtags. You don't want to be using like 10 and 20 hashtags because you will be penalized for that and your organic reach will go down. LinkedIn's not like Instagram. That's not where it works. You just need to research your hashtags well. Um, less is more and make sure they're hitting the right people. So hopefully you found that useful, guys. If you have any questions at all, just drop me a message in the comments. Make sure you subscribe and also check out my book, The Photographer's Missing Link on Amazon. It's one of the most up-to-date books about LinkedIn, taking you from absolute beginner to influencer. And it's just 170 pages. Just go over to Amazon, type in The Photographer's Missing Link. It's a 2022 book. It's only about a month old. So the content on there is really up-to-date. Thanks again, guys. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care.